pure water flowing freely through a forest is a powerful attraction for many people. A mountain stream pounding over ancient boulders seems to evoke primal feelings in us. And if it should become a waterfall, well, that will be the most excitement of all. A number of wild running streams and waterfalls can be found in western Massachusetts. In the rugged hills of the southwest corner of the state is Bash Bish Falls State Park. A hike down the trail from the parking area to the falls will bring you through an old growth, mixed age forest of hemlocks and hardwoods. Along the trail, watch for this very large, old black birch tree with its gnarly crown. You'll see the moss-covered rocks of this intermittent runoff stream. A little farther along, you'll have to step over the mossy roots of this old yellow birch tree. You'll pass by the twin trunks of this sugar maple through a stand of chestnut oaks with their deeply furrowed bark. This is one of the old-growth red oaks. This ancient mountainside forest sets the stage for what awaits below. Bash Bish Falls is probably the most scenic waterfall in Massachusetts. Above an emerald green plunge pool, a huge granite boulder splits Bash Bish Brook into two falls. After the brook has fallen through this long ravine between two steep mountainsides. Old growth forests are particularly effective at filtering water, making it as pure as nature can provide. The scene is no less spectacular in winter. In summer, the surrounding forest here is a lush green, but on this 12 degree December day, it's the frozen falls and the entire stream that glow with an emerald color. A last look back at the falls, and this water is now on its way downstream west into New York State to the Hudson River and eventually to the Atlantic. A one-mile walk on a gravel road in the woods in the Chester Blanford State Forest will get you to Sanderson Brook Falls. Springtime runoff can make this a spectacular sight, but in the depth of winter, the serenity of a frozen waterfall has a less dramatic beauty all its own. And you may have it all to yourself. Winter is beginning to lose its grip on Glendale Brook. On property owned by the trustees of reservations, Glendale Brook cascades down the side of a mountain into the middle branch of the Westfield River. 
To best see the falls, hike down the short trail alongside the brook. This will take you down slope through a forest of older hemlock trees. The brook starts its descent, slipping away under a covering of ice. This is one of the longest waterfalls in Massachusetts, dropping some 150 feet over 800 feet in length. The roar of the cascade is subdued by the ice coating. Here and there the water splashes up through small openings in the ice. A couple old hemlock trees stand sentry at the base of the falls. Judging by the appearance of their bark and limb characteristics, these hemlocks could easily be two centuries old. From here, we can now get a better sense of the scale of this cascade. A few weeks later and the weather is warming up. The sun has opened access to the slope through the break in the hemlock canopy. As the warm-up continues, the ice and snow will soon be gone. To the north, there lies another cascade. And it's on Cascade Brook. The brook flows down through an extremely steep-sided ravine. The falls lie upstream. Hiking up alongside the brook allows you to enjoy its many smaller features before you reach the falls. With the sun coming and going among the late winter clouds, the lighting and the temperatures vary in the deep ravine. In short order, you get a glimpse of the cascade just up ahead on the right. Your attention, of course, is drawn to the cascade. But as you approach it, you become aware that there's a hidden ravine around this corner to the left, and it has a delightful surprise. It's an even more impressive waterfall than the first cascade on the right. And now it becomes clear why this is known as Twin Falls. Summer advances and purple flowering raspberry is found along the roadsides near Tannery Falls. White admiral and red spotted purple butterflies are everywhere. Parker Brook or Tannery Brook flows through Tannery Pond and then down through a long rock gorge in an old growth forest.
The stream flows over ancient stone and under the leaning trunk of this old growth yellow birch. There it drops down into a deep, narrow gorge in the rock. As it emerges from the gorge, the stream courses down through the shade of more old hemlocks and yellow birch trees. And here, its waters merge with those of Ross Brook, which has just come down over Tannery Falls. Climbing up alongside the falls allows enjoying the view from the top, and you can see where Ross Brook is just about to go over the precipice. A walk upstream along the trail will bring you through more of the old growth forest. and will bring you back to a parking place near Tannery Pond. On the Massachusetts border with Connecticut, a short walk through a forest of tall white pines will bring you to Campbell Falls. Some of these pine trees are over 130 feet tall. This impressive red oak leans precariously off the hillside. Just beyond it, you reach the base of Campbell Falls. The cascade zigzags as the water plunges down over the ancient granite of the Dalton Formation. The Whiting River flows under a beautifully made stone arch bridge just before plunging over the falls. The rock flanking the falls is dramatically tilted. One of the larger pine trees on the site stands on the hillside next to the falls. And there are a number of other impressive eastern white pines. Here, a dense cover of partridge berry carpets the forest floor.
and there are some very old hemlocks as well. With a little luck, you may get to see some of the other inhabitants of the Campbell Falls area enjoying the water as much as you are. Little Gun Brook begins life at the foot of Mount Toby in Sunderland. It emerges from a small but picturesque white pine and hemlock forest, passing this old black birch tree. Then it placidly drops off a ledge under the watchful eye of this custodian. Not all waterfalls need to be tall and powerful to be appreciated and enjoyed. Your mood might call for something more calming and peaceful. The relaxing effect of lightly splashing water in a green forest is well understood. Although the site appears to be well visited, on a weekday you'll probably find yourself alone with your thoughts here. The surrounding woodlands are peaceful and offer plenty for a naturalist to explore. And exploring a few yards downstream reveals a small surprise. Gunbrook drops off another small rock ledge. Gunbrook then slips away into a small pond which drains into the Connecticut River nearby. Wakona Falls offers another opportunity to enjoy a small waterfall and an old growth conifer forest. The trail from the parking area to the falls will bring you past a small seep in the woods with an abundant growth of horsetails or scouring rush. The short walk brings you to the rocky stream bed just below the falls. A high rocky ledge is peppered with yellow birch and hemlock trees. Spilling out of a gorge through the rock is Wakona Falls. Above the falls, there's a series of small cascades in the rocky gorge. Standing silently are numerous old hemlocks, like the Indian Braves who, according to legend, watched a contest here between two others who were vying for the hand of the chief's daughter, Wakona. An old growth red maple tree leans into its neighbors. This laid up stone foundation is what remains of a water-powered grist mill built in the 1770s. The millstones that were used to grind corn and wheat here were brought over from France. Broken pieces of them can still be seen nearby.
the stones were brought across the Atlantic from France to Boston by ship and then hauled by ox-drawn wagon all the way across the state to this site just above the waterfall. These are just a few of the many scenic waterfalls in New England with interesting history and great surrounding forests.